Hi, welcome to WeldNerd. Today we're going to be talking about how to program the pulser on the Dynasty 280 and 210DX. Pulsing is a very valuable asset to a TIG welder because it does a number of things for us. Number one, it reduces heat input, which is critical in minimizing distortion. And number two, at higher frequencies we see a narrowing of the arc cone, which results in uh, a concentration of our heat, allowing us to travel faster. Uh, we also see an increase in arc stability and directional control at higher frequencies. At lower frequencies, you can employ it uh, for aesthetic reasons, if you want a very uniform ripple appearance on your bead. Um, at even lower frequencies, it can be used uh, to really have great control over welding very thin material, and we'll get deeper into that in another video. So basically, what we're looking at when we say pulsing is if you were to be welding with conventional DC TIG, so you just turn it on, you set your amperage, you go to your pedal and you hammer that pedal all the way down. This is what your current graph would look like, just a straight line, 100 amps, whatever it is, all the way across. Now when we pulse, what we do is we vary, we oscillate between a very high peak and a low background amperage. And we do this over and over again at varying frequencies. Now when we're doing this, we've basically got four different things that we're controlling on the machine. So those are our main pulsing parameters. Number one is peak amperage. This is simply the amperage that you're setting on the front panel of the machine. So that is right here, say 100 amps on this colorful graph here. Number two is pulses per second. Pulses per second is nothing more than how many times this cycle repeats itself within a single second. Uh, it's the same thing as hertz, but a lot of times people don't use hertz when they're talking about pulsing because it leads to confusion between that and uh, AC output frequency, but they're interchangeable. It's the same thing. Uh, next, we have peak time. Now, on the Miller machines, this is always programmed as a percentage. <clears throat> so it's the percentage of time at peak relative to one full cycle. So if your peak is set at 40%, 40% of that cycle is going to be spent at peak, 60% is going to be spent at the background amperage. And that leads us to our fourth, the background amperage. Now this is programmed as a percentage of your peak amperage. So that allows you to change your peak amperage on the front panel and your graph will scale the whole time. So those are the four main uh, parameters and let's look at how we want to program them. So our four parameters in pulsing are going to be our peak amperage, our pulses per second, our peak time, and our background amperage. So our peak amperage is just going to be set on the panel uh, right in the main interface. Now we press the pulser button, two things light up. Number one, we have on, indicating that pulsing is enabled, um, and it goes to our pulses per second. So this is our adjustment here. We can go anywhere from 0.1 up to 500 pulses per second, but we'll leave this at the factory pro set of 100 for demonstration purposes. Uh, next is going to be our peak time, so how much time within a single cycle is spent at the peak amperage that we set on the front panel. 40% is the pro set. We can take that from 5% up to 95%, but again for demonstration we'll just leave it at pro set. Next and finally is going to be our background amperage, so when we're not at the peak amperage, uh, this is a percentage of that that's the background. And this is set at 25. Again, we can go 5 to 95, but 25% is a good place to start. Now, if I hit this pulser button one more time, pulsing is off. We're no longer enabled. The LED is not lit up next to on. So, if I want to get out of this and control my peak, press amperage, and you see it says peak here. If it doesn't say peak, pulsing is not on. If the LED is not lit up next to on, pulser is not on. So at this point, we can adjust our peak amperage and everything else will scale accordingly. And that's it. We're ready to weld with the pulser.